Welcome back, Cat5 here, and in this video we're going to be going through the last exercise from chapter 3, which is to find and close a mutex. So in this exercise we're going to be using Process Explorer to find the different handles within a program. We've got to look for a mutex handle in particular and close that off so that we could run multiple instances of a game. So let's have a look at the game. So if you just come over here, chapter 3, close mutex, and we're running one instance of the game. Now if we try to run the game again, while this one is already running, we can't do that. It says only one instance of the game can run at a time. Now, I want to quickly go over the sort of code behind this. So if you come over here, we get a rough idea of what the code might look like. So we're creating a handle to an object mutex. Um, using the create mutex a windows api function now this function could potentially cause get less error to equal to a flag called error already exists now that would happen if there is an instance of the game already running or the mutex object having already been created by the game if not, it's just going to run the game as usual. So let's just come over to MSDN to get a better idea. And in the return value section of the create mutex a function, it says if the mutex is a na is named mutex and the object existed before this function call, the return value is a handle to the existing object. So what happens when we run another instance of the game? Oops, that's a wrong one. So if we try running this game. The return value of this function is a handle to the current mutex object. So it won't create its own mutex. It will just point to the one that already exists. Um, this also makes get last error return error already exists. So that way we could use some conditional branching and conditional code to allow the program to run. We'll just close the program run a message box and return. And that's exactly what happens over here. So if the game is not running or if they re if the handle points to a new object mutex it would assume that the that there is no other instance of the game running and therefore it would run the game as as normal uh, now what we could do is we could use process explorer to view the different handles and close them and that's exactly what we're going to do so we come over to press explorer run it as admin Click yes, uh, and just let that load. Okay, so by default, Process Explorer would not show the bottom pane, so that's what we're going to do. This will show us some hidden DLLs and it will show us different handles that our process is using. So we've just got to come over to the game that we have here and you see the different types of handles that it's using. Now, Mutant is the kernel name for Mutex, so all we would have to do is come here, right click, and close the handle and it's really as simple as that we could run a new instance of the game and it would work perfectly fine now this game would run through this code and create a new object of mutex so if you run and try to run another instance of the game it won't allow us to do that because it will just create a handle to the current current existing object and then get less there would be set so if we close the handle of uh, create mutex a on this one, then we would be able to open up a new instance of the game and it's as simple as that really uh, i'm going to show you guys another way that we could do it and i'll also maybe make a patch using uh x32 dbg because this one's pretty quick so just going to run the game open 32 dbg and i'm just going to attach the game Now I'm going to go on view modules, uh, click on the first one and then type in mutex and we see here create mutex A. So it's going to come there and press F2 here to set a breakpoint and I'm going to restart it. I 
off my breakpoint and went. So again, just go up to modules, come here, mutex, F2 there, and we're going to run it. So it's our breakpoint, so I'm just going to do all control F9, F8. So this is where we get the mutex function called, so let's break here instead. And we see some things, and we see a compare, and then J and E. So we see get less error here, we see a compare EX to B7, and then we see J and E. And then we see some string here, which we've seen before inside of the message box. So if we want to jump past this, we could just change this to JMP. This would be an unconditional jump, and then we could just patch this. Now, I've already done this before, so I'm not really going to go through it in too much detail. I mean, I did it before, uh, outside of recording. So I'm just going to type new mutex, and it's sort of pretty simple. <laughs> so I'm going to close this down, and then just run new mutex. And you'll see, I should be able to run as many instances of this game as I want. Very simple stuff. So yeah, we have multiple instances of the game running simply because we jumped over there. And um, here's what the code might look like after the patch. So it still does the, uh, still runs the create mutex a, a Windows API function. It still compares the Galas error to uh, the flag, but then rather than running a message box, if that is the case, so rather than saying J and E, like if it's not equal to, then come here, we're saying go to game code and it's an unconditional jump. So this stuff will never really get hit and it will never really run because we're just jumping straight to another portion of our code. Um, but that's it for this video, that's chapter 3 done. Next we've got chapter 4, which will be on some x86 assembly or something like that, I'm not too sure. Let's see. Game dissection <coughs> from code to memory general primer. So some x86 stuff, see if I'll go through that. Uh, but that's it for this video, thank you for watching. If you watch it all the way through make sure to like comment subscribe share and uh, have a good day